Welcome back to New Day. It seems like the rules of conduct in the workplace have been relaxed in recent years, but where is the line? Are we misinterpreting business and boardroom rules? Here with some tips on what flies and what doesn't, please welcome the author of Don't Burp in the Boardroom. Some good advice, civility consultant, <laughs> Rosenda Randall. It's very good to meet you. How are you Thank doing? you. I'm doing well. Thank you for writing this book. I mean, there's some good reminders for more experienced workers, some great advice for people who are young or moving up. I really enjoyed it, and you write with humor, obviously, Thank based you. on the title. Let's talk about some of the common workplace annoyances or little things we might need to remember not to do? The ones I hear about the most and most recently is hygiene. You'd really be surprised. Yes. Really? Yes. Like uh, the people last... who forgot to shower? Yes. Or apply deodorant or change their shirt. Um, in fact, there was a manager who I'm going to be speaking um, to their group is they, they took him to a conference and the gentleman or his staff member wore the same shirt the entire week. Oh. And by the end of the week, it wasn't pleasant. And they were meeting clients, potential clients. Right. And so that's been one of the top things. And then, of course, attire. And being that I'm from the Silicon Valley area, that, you know, Facebook, Google, all those kind yep. of pride themselves in being very casual atmosphere. But they're finding that there is a fine line, like not changing your clothes or maybe being <laughs> too wrinkled. And, and that's okay right. if you're going to work behind the scenes. But some of them get sent to meet a client and then you're not prepared and i also say what if you're you know if you're on some online dating service or something and you get a call for a date at the end of the are you, are you prepared to go right. out too right so sometimes if you do work in a really casual environment i always say keep a pair of you know khakis or nice shoes or a jacket and and so that you're prepared that's for, good advice for it any shouldn't look like you pulled it out of the laundry basket yeah. even though it's casual okay that's it another thing that you listed in the book that i thought was really important because i'm guilty of this is a lack of cell phone manners and i don't do it in the restaurant and that kind of stuff. But I think I do talk too loudly on my cell phone. Yes, and if you're in a cubicle type environment, a lot of people put it on speaker so they can multitask. Mm -hmm. And that's another, you know, kind of pet peeve in the workplace. People, don't people like have that. to listen to other people's conversations. And as interesting as your life might be, you know, <laughs> not everyone wants to hear it. If your life is genuinely interesting, you <laughs> yes. don't want everybody to hear it. Yes. So you say also a lack of please and thank you. So just basic manners, remember those. And the the sharing a personal drama. Now that's interesting because a lot of people have observed that with social media, maybe some of the barriers that used to be present that you didn't talk about some of these things at work have been lowered. Where do you, where are we in this? Should we be pulling back on the sharing? A little bit. I think it's. Uh detrimental to your career to share too much, especially if it's, you know, Debbie Downer stuff, nothing mm -hmm. against Debbie's, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but if you're always having a concern, a problem uh, at home, your supervisors, your bosses, managers, whoever makes the decision may feel that you might not be ready or prepared to take mm -hmm. on a responsibility or see a client, or is this what you're going to act like when you take a client to lunch? Interesting. So it's, it's something to hold back on and also depending on what it is. Now, we all go through some personal drama, I guess, if you will, or, or you know, illnesses and things, and we do want to share it with our coworkers. But if we're on the road to recovery, you know, if it's something like that, that that is who you are month after month, that can get old, and it puts your um, coworkers in an awkward position too, because after a while, they don't know what to do about the same problem over and over. Point. So if that's your pattern, yes. it's a good idea to maybe change that. Um, so let's talk about gossip. If, if a person wants to avoid gossip in the workplace, which is seems like probably a good idea. What's the best way, especially if you're working in close proxim proximity with other people? Well, you can't really avoid gossip. I mean, you can't control what someone's going to say, but I always say try and have a go-to line that's comfortable for you. You know, I'd rather not hear it, or I don't get involved, or oh, I've got enough drama of my own. I don't need mm -hmm. to hear it. Um, a little, a few others that might really be more of a zinger is gosh, maybe we should go and tell that person what's being spread about them. <laughs> That'll stop them immediately and they'll probably never want to tell you again. <laughs> that sounds good. Some tips for a business meal because this is something, um, you know, if we've kind of been used to casual businesses uh, and casual dinners and then it's maybe meeting with a venture capitalist or it's somebody who has different standards for what's okay, what mm -hmm. should we know? 
Well, one of the top things is pace yourself, especially if you're used to eating alone and you just eat to nourish your body and you're done. You really need to watch how other, how other people are eating. And if it requires you putting down your knife and fork, wiping your lips or taking a sip, participating in the conversation, whatever it takes to slow down and finish at the same time as everyone else. The other thing I say, even on a first date, uh, or a first any type of business meeting is avoid you know uh, double triple burgers or any type of big sandwiches <laughs> avoid things with a bone in it you know it sometimes mm -hmm. it just slides right off your right. plate and a long pasta Eat, I, and I consider myself pretty a pro at but there's in that inevitable drop that will come here or on your chin so those are the top three things that I You're, say try and to avoid that often you know ends up on your clothes stay yes. off your phone you say which and this is interesting because there are generational differences in how much we consider that being um, rude by splitting our attention. Is it just better, no matter what your age, what the business, put the phone away if you're having a meeting or a meal together? Definitely put the phone away. However, the generational thing, and I can talk about that for 20 minutes, but if you go and have lunch with someone who's obviously your, you know, your dad's age or something, and they don't have their phone on, that might be a good indicator. Follow the lead, especially if the person is your boss superior or a potential client or somebody you're interviewing with. See what they have going on. And I know, and people ask me, well, I need my phone to check my calendar. You pick it up and say, would you mind if I put that in my, or check my calendar now? Then they know you're doing that, mm -hmm. you know, and don't quickly scroll on your Twitter, and, <laughs> you know, a chuckle or something like that. Just <laughs> <laughs> do what you're going to do and put it put it away. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Because yes. I know if I'm talking to somebody and they're inexplicably looking at their phone, I feel like they're not paying attention to what no. I'm saying, even if that's not what they're meaning to no. put out. Oh, I'm sorry. And the other thing too is if you're expecting a call, and there are some, you know, if you're in a certain industry, you might be expecting, a, uh, you know, an important call or, or from the meeting or something that you have to tend to. Tell the person when you sit down, this is at a meeting anytime, I am expecting one call, and then take it, be as brief as you can, and then turn your phone off. So that's great just to let them know let what's them know. going on. All right, we have other um, important tips, and we're going to put those on the website. We haven't gotten to all of them, all right. but the networking tips are especially important, including watching your breath, coffee drinkers, when yes. you go into network. <laughs> so we'll put Definitely. that stuff up for us. Thank All you right. so much. The book is great, and it's just a good Thank reminder. You. And every now and then you'll recognize yourself as I did and go, okay, I'm going to do better on that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Coming up, our favorite can't miss.